Hey, what you do in your own kitchen and what you do in your own shaker cup is entirely on you. I can't tell you that artificial sweeteners are good, bad, ugly. You have to make that decision. But I can tell you the worst possible time to be consuming an artificial sweetener. I'll go easy on you. Okay, we all consume some artificial sweeteners. Stevia, monk fruit are natural sweeteners, but some people still categorize them as that. But I'm, the reality is they're in just about everything. And we have to ask ourselves the big question, like is a little bit going to hurt you? Probably not, okay? But we do know that there is some evidence behind especially things like acyl sulfate potassium, which you'll see as ACE-K on a label, and how it affects the microbiome. It's pretty clear science. But there's a lot of things that negatively affect our microbiome. But what we have to look at here is when we take it in, when we are the most vulnerable, and when we would have the worst possible impact from it. So if we can just avoid those kinds of times, this one in particular, then I think we're going to be in a lot better of a position. Hey, after this video, check out my friends over at Thrive Market. If you've been a veteran of this channel, watch me for a while, you know they've been sponsoring this channel for over three years. They're awesome and they're an online membership-based grocery store, which means you can order pretty much whatever you can imagine in the way of pantry staples, whether it's keto, paleo, fasting, vegan, whatever, and get it delivered right to your doorstep, saving you a bunch of cashola because you're not having to drive to the grocery store, not having to use your time, but it's also just convenient as all heck and you can get my specific shopping lists and things that I recommend. So check them out if you want to start getting groceries delivered to your doorstep in a very economical way. They're down below in the description, plus there's a special free gift for those of you that use that link because you're watching my videos. All right, so to start off, there's a study that's published in the journal Gastroenterology that found that prior to going into like any kind of intermittent fasting session or anything like that, our gut motility slows down, which is kind of wild because most of us think that when we stop eating, things kind of speed up, but the body has a little bit of a, like a preserving mechanism. Like it's recognizes that, wait a minute, this person's not eating. So if you're doing intermittent fasting and, and you're eating your last meal, your body's going to slow down the digestion of that last meal in an effort to, well, preserve some of the nutrients, but also preserve energy by slowing down digestion and not forming and creating as many enzymes as it normally would, because that takes energy. So less enzymes equals less breakdown of food. So the good news with that is it means like if you're intermittent fasting or anything like that, well, that means that the last meal that you ate could really just stick in you for a while and you could get all these benefits from it, micronutrients, microbiome, everything like that. But what people aren't looking at when they look at this really cool, compelling science is that, oh shoot, what we take in that could be bad is also going to stick around for a longer period of time too, because it's triggering the same system. So let's paint a picture here for a second. Let's say you just drank, I don't know, just a diet soda that had a bunch of acyl sulfate, potassium, and aspartame in it. Well, I mean, ordinarily, let's be realistic here. It's probably working its way through you pretty dang quick. And unless you're having like this compounding effect of drinking it all the time, it's probably a pretty minimal effect. But one thing is for certain, it affects your microbiome. But if things are moving smoothly as they should, because you're taking care of every other aspect of your life, you know, good on you, it's probably gonna move quick. But if you have it, say, right at the beginning of your fast or right with your last meal, uh, it just went along for the ride with the brakes being hit. So it's like being an accomplice <laughs> and it didn't even know what it was getting itself into. It's like here comes acid sulfate and potassium in your diet soda along for the ride with your perfectly healthy, you know, steamed spinach and, you know, baby carrots and whatever it is you're having because you're making good choices. But uh, that acid sulfate and potassium that's normally going to move pretty quick is now like, whoa, 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 I didn't sign up for this. Now I'm hanging out in the gut biome, messing stuff up left and right. And that's exactly what's happening here. So I guess it asks the question, like, I mean, when should you have it? Man, I'm gonna say a full disclaimer here. In my humble opinion, you should limit it as much as you possibly can. But if it's part of your life, and you have it from time to time, let's just be real, because you're human. I would say the best time that you would wanna have it would be, well, when you are not gonna be going into any kind of intermittent fasting regimen, but also after you break your fast, maybe like one to two hours after you break your fast, because then what happens is things speed up again. One thing you may have noticed is after intermittent fasting, you like 
you sometimes have to run to the bathroom after you break your fast. Let's just put it that way. Because things have come to a little bit of a halt, then they start to speed up, then you eat food, and the body's like, food, nourishment, spazzes out, enzymes, 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 digestion, digestion, digestion. And it's like sometimes one, two hours later, everything just like, whoop, that just dropped into my, uh, say, sending colon, it's time to go, okay? So everything's moving quicker. So you have a better chance of things moving through you fast after you've broken your fast, but not right when you break your fast. So it's kind of interesting. It's actually worse to have your artificial sweeteners like right with your pre-fast meal than it is to have them after your fast. Granted, after your fast, you're going to absorb a lot of those nutrients. Okay, you're gonna absorb a lot of things, good and bad, but they're not hanging out in your gut. We're talking microbiome specifically. Acesulfame, potassium, aspartame, sucralose, any of these artificial sweeteners, the actual hepatoxicity is pretty low. They're not super toxic to the liver. They're more toxic to the microbiome. And that's a big picture situation. And I'm basically being frank here. Like I would love to be able to sit here and bash artificial sweeteners like every other person on YouTube. But the reality is, as far as toxicity goes, you have to consume a lot. Aspartame has some neurotoxin effects. It has some other potential carcinogenic effects. But a lot of things do. I'm focused more on the microbiome. So anyhow, do not have your artificial sweeteners right before you start a fast. Try to allocate them after your fast. And then you're probably wondering, should I have them during a fast at all? During a fast, just switch to stevia monk fruit. It's easy. You really don't need to be having the artificial sweeteners during your fast. Why would you really need to do that? Plus, the cephalic insulin response that causes an insulin spike is pretty darn high with things like acesulfame potassium. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. I'll see you tomorrow.